Let's combine the steady bass and the pinch technique to play our first fingerstyle tune. One, two, three, and. Before I get into the explanation of what's going on here, uh, here's a brief advertisement for checking out the music and tablature notation. Because looking at the music and tab, even if reading music gives you the heebie-jeebies, it can help just to look at the tab just to see where the pinches are falling. Because when your thumb and your fingers are playing together, the notes will be lined up vertically right on top of each other. And so you can see the steady bass moving across the page and you can just look and see where the fingers are lining up with the bass and where they're being played in between the bass notes. So this tune, the bass is never moving from the low E string. You're just going to keep playing quarter notes like we've been doing. And then to begin with, with the fingers, you're going to use your index and your middle finger to play these three double stops on this one falls on beat one then beat three then beat one one two three four one two three four so that happens twice and then there's a little single note lick that comes down from the high string all happening over the bass as well. Now they're all all the notes are falling on beats one and three except towards the end. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the thing to check out is that you've got these notes happening. You play twice in a row with your index finger on the third string and then use your index finger to play the fourth string as well because you don't want to bring your thumb up to do it because it's busy and these fingers are you're using them to play the higher strings so the finger is going to go ring middle middle index 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 and the last thing I want to point out about the timing is that at the end of the phrase there's two whole measures one two three four one two three four where it's just your thumb keeping time. But it's really important to keep counting in your head at first or really keep track just with the feel so that you don't shortchange those two measures. You want to make sure the thumb plays for the full two measures because the thumb is like the rhythm section or the bass player. It's got to keep going for the full duration even if your fingers are off having a good time because they're done playing for a couple of measures. So you put those two sections together, the double stop section and the single note section and you've got the whole tune. Now, once you've got this foundation together, it's going to feel pretty familiar, but at the outset, you're really trying to coordinate a lot of different things at once. You've got to keep the thumb going. That's the most important. And then make sure that the fingers are lining up in all the right places. So take your time, and don't worry if it feels like it's taking a while to get everything hooked up, because once you get it, it'll make a lot of sense, and it's definitely a tricky thing to do when you're just getting started. This song falls naturally into two parts, the first part with the double stops and the second part with the single note lick. So that's one natural way to break it up when you're practicing. Just make sure you've got the double, sp double stop part comfortable and then work individually on the part with the single note lick. Um, if you just always start from the beginning and play through till you break down, you're always going to know the beginning part of the tune way better than the last part of the tune. So spend some time on the double stop part then even if that's not perfect, go ahead and spend some time on the single note part, just starting from the single note section, starting from there. 
and then go back and try to combine those two sections. The trickiest part is probably where you have to start moving around with your index finger. This part where... So try to take just the beginning of that measure. And practice just those two measures right there. Or even just work on this part. Slow it way down if you need to. Being able to slow yourself down is like being your own slow-mo machine. You can just go as slowly as you need to to see where everything's got to go. And once you can do it in a little loop like that without dropping any notes or beats, then move on to this measure and loop those two measures. gradually bring it up to speed so that finally you can do that section and then put it back into the context of where it came from originally and then try to do it with the whole double stops part coming first. Before you go on to the next lesson, try getting the whole tune so it sits at about that tempo so it'll feel like this. One, two, three. And...